Kansas State has always been the little brother. The school is located in Manhattan, Kansas, otherwise known as the Other Manhattan. They share a state with the University of Kansas, whose basketball tradition literally precedes the existence of organized hoops. And let's be honest, depending on where you're from, they may not even be the most well-known purple wildcats in the country, because there's Northwestern, Abilene Christian, and Weber State, too. And believe it or not, all of those schools have had their own claims to fame in recent years when it comes to basketball. Life certainly isn't easy playing second fiddle, but fortunately, I think Kansas State's luck is beginning to turn, because I believe they've hired a head coach that is ready to take K-State to the top of college basketball. His name is Jerome Tang, and this is the Tang Effect. When Kansas State hired Jerome Tang earlier this offseason, you could immediately sense a shift in the culture of the program. Here was this 55-year-old guy who had never had a head coaching job at the Division I level before, but something felt different. There was a positivity there in his introductory press conference that gave K-State fans a quiet confidence and excitement around the program that hadn't really been felt in a few years. Sure, the team was expected to be a work in progress, as the Wildcats had lost all but two players from a team that went 14-17 and 17 a year ago, and Tang was basically starting over. But as he quickly demonstrated to the entire country, that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Tang and his staff immediately hit the transfer portal hard, replenishing a depleted roster with older guys who brought experience and maturity to the program. When his barrage of the portal was over, Tang had successfully brought in 10 transfers who had playing experience ranging from high major Division I all the way down to junior college. Despite Tang's total makeover of the squad, Kansas State was still picked to finish dead last in the Big 12 preseason media poll, and an NCAA tournament berth looked unlikely as the season got underway. But now, let's skip ahead to the present. Kansas State currently sits at 16-2 and 5-1 and in the Big 12. They are ranked 13th in the AP poll and are likely to rise in the next one, and they have wins over Baylor, Kansas, and Texas. Otherwise known as the teams projected to finish 1-2-3 and three, per the same poll that had Kansas State finishing last. Kansas State has won in all types of games, too. Shootouts, overtime nail-biters, defensive slugfests. It's clear that this team is just incredibly well-coached and confident in what they're doing each and every night. So let's meet the 2022-23 Wildcats because, trust me, there are a lot of new faces. Leading Kansas State is Florida transfer Keontae Johnson, and if his name sounds familiar, it's probably because he was a legitimate NBA prospect when he was in Gainesville. He was actually named preseason SEC Player of the Year heading into the 2020-21 season, but unfortunately, he suffered a well-documented health scare where he collapsed in the middle of the game and had to be transported to a local hospital. While Johnson ultimately recovered after a few scary days in intensive care, his basketball career was put on pause. He sat out the rest of the 2021 season and the entire 2022 season before he ultimately decided to enter the transfer portal and continue his career. Miraculously, Johnson hasn't seemed to miss a beat. The senior is averaging 18.7 points per game on 55, 41, 75 shooting splits, and he's become Kansas State's go-to offensive weapon as the season has gone on. He's the team's leading rebounder as a 6'6 wing grabs a little over 7 boards a game, and Johnson's physicality combined with his skill allows him to create separation and score efficiently at all three levels. Johnson currently converts on around 68% of his attempts around the rim and 45% of his shots in the mid-range which are both well above the Division I average. And what's also impressive about Johnson's efficiency is that a lot of these looks are unassisted, thus demonstrating his elite self-creation value. Perhaps K-State's second most impactful transfer is big man Naquan Tomlin. The 6'10 forward is averaging close to 11 points per game along with 6 rebounds and 1 block, and his emergence in the basketball world has been anything but expected. Despite being a key contributor on a top 15 team in the country, Tomlin actually didn't play basketball in high school like at all. He started his organized basketball career at Rochester Community College in New York, where he played for one season before moving on to Chipola College in Florida, where he played two seasons while averaging around 12 points and five rebounds a game. In his first season as a Wildcat, though, Tomlin has been a revelation. He's a physical and mobile defender who can stay in front of guards, like here where he totally blows up Kansas's final play and forces overtime for K-State. And on offense, he's shown a real ability to break defenders down off the dribble, which at 6'10 is a unique sight to see. His skill package is so intriguing that he's actually getting serious NBA looks, which for a guy who didn't play high school basketball, is an absolutely insane trajectory. Tomlin's skill and mobility pairs extremely well with his athleticism, as he can finish over and through defenders with powerful dunks. Now, it's important to note that Tomlin isn't a finished product, and his efficiency leaves a lot to be desired. But the flashes of skill and athleticism in addition to his defense makes him one of 
K-State's most important players now and as the season progresses. Six-man Desi Sills also came to K-State after stints at Arkansas and Arkansas State, and the 6'1 guard has given the Wildcats a key scoring punch off the bench, as he's averaging around 9 points per game on 46% shooting. While Sills has never been a particularly efficient scorer, his value lies more in advantage creation, as he's a guy who can get his own shot and go on personal scoring runs at any given time. Other key transfers include Cameron Carter, who came from Mississippi State and has started every game for the Wildcats while averaging around 7 points a game. Forward David Gasson, who transferred in from Virginia Tech, is putting up 8 points and 5 rebounds on close to 70% shooting. And guard Taiki Green and big man Abayami Iola also give K-State key minutes off the bench as well. While transfers have certainly played a monumental role in K-State's quick turnaround, they aren't representative of the whole story. As mentioned earlier, Kansas State actually returned two players from last year's team, and those two were guard Marquise Noel and forward Ishmael Massoud. Massoud comes off the bench but has proven himself to be a knockdown shooter as he's hitting 47% from three-point range, but Noel has blossomed into Kansas State's offensive engine during his second year in Manhattan. The 5'8 guard is putting up ridiculous numbers so far this season, as he's averaging 16 points and 8 assists while also knocking down 37% of his 3-point attempts. His high IQ and penchant for putting together big-time performances when K-State needs them most has been on full display this year, as evidenced by his recent back-to-back 36 and 32-point outings against Texas and Baylor, respectively. Noel just has the ultimate onions, and he's never afraid of taking important shots. When K-State needs a leader, it's Noel. When they need a key basket, it's Noel. He just has a confidence that rubs off on the rest of the team, and it makes this program a lot more dangerous. Now, throughout this video, you may have noticed that I haven't really used a lot of numbers in my analysis of Kansas State, and that's because, well, they aren't exactly a team that fits the statistical bill of a typical contender. The Wildcats are solid on both offense and defense as they rank in the top 40 nationally in both, but they don't really top the charts in any statistical category, like some of the other top teams in America. But statistical dominance isn't what the Tang Effect is about. The Tang Effect, for lack of a better phrase, is purely a vibes thing. Really digging your vibe. If you watch press conferences, or check out social media posts involving this Kansas State team, you'll notice a common theme. Smiles. This team just always seems happy to be with each other and playing basketball. Whether it's a Christmas gift exchange or a birthday celebration or an episode of Hang with Tang, the vibes around this program are just awesome, and I think that can carry a team a long way. So yeah, Kansas State has really talented and exciting players. There's no doubt about that. But what sets this program apart from other talented teams is really just the people running it and the players around it. There's an energy here that I think is sustainable for a really long time in Manhattan. And assuming K-State keeps winning ballgames this season and beyond, I think the Tang Effect is real and it's most likely here to stay. So, Kansas State may finally find itself not overshadowed by cities or schools or purple wildcats, but instead, they may very well find themselves on top of the college basketball world. And once they get there, they'll have one man to thank, Jerome Tang. Thanks so much for watching, and give me your thoughts below.